2001 marked the debut of Remedy Entertainment's best-selling neo-noir action franchise, starring its titular monologuing One Policeman Army, Max Payne. The first Max Payne game was praised for its atmosphere, bullet-time shooting mechanics, and its amazing high-definition textures, and even won several accolades, including the BAFTA award. The story about Max trying to uncover the death of his wife and daughter, going undercover, fighting the mob, and ultimately getting revenge on the people behind the murder and the designer drug V has struck a chord with many gamers back in the day. It was gritty, dark, daring, and stylish. Due to its success it spawned two sequels, Max Payne 2 The Fall of Max Payne in 2003 and Max Payne 3 in 2012. Furthermore, in 2008, a movie based on the first entry in the franchise was released, starring none other than Marky Mark as the titular character. What? No! But let's save that for another time. However, what went over most of the fans' heads was that in 2003, another version of Max Payne 1 has seen the light of day. On the Game Boy Advance! Fittingly titled, Max Payne Advance. It was developed by Mobius Entertainment, who later became Rockstar Leeds, famous for GTA Liberty City stories and GTA Vice City stories on the Sony PSP. Thanks to the PSP's strong hardware, both titles were pretty close to their console cousins GTA 3 and Vice City in terms of both graphics and gameplay. So, how did they bring a cinematic third-person shooter like Max Payne to a hardware like the Game Boy Advance? It's simple. By turning it into an isometric action game. And surprisingly, it's a pretty faithful adaptation when compared to its 3D counterpart. Which you can already tell by simply looking at its graphics. The sprites look pretty much exactly like in the 3D versions. And the game even uses polygonal character models. The shoot dodging, bullet time, painkillers, most of the weapons and even graphic novel cutscenes are there, and the latter are even fully voiced too, which is quite an unusual feat for a Game Boy Advance game, even though the quality of the audio is pretty low. Then he got needy, just the man I've been killing to see. Pain? Freaking fat! I knew from day one there was something screwy about you! The gameplay is pretty self-explanatory by just looking at the footage. You explore the levels and shoot every gangster in your path. Like on consoles and PC, Max can interact with several objects in the game world, like flushing toilets, opening cupboards, or failing at playing the piano. The layout of many of the levels is pretty similar to the 3D versions, and you can tell that the developers were really trying to bring the same experience with the small screen. However, you can find some huge differences in terms of both content, gameplay and design. This is the only Max Payne game that features a life system. At the start of each stage you're given four lives, and if you die, you start at the entrance of the room you just died in, with every enemy killed still being dead. Once you run out of lives, you start the stage from the beginning. A huge difference in this game is that many of the chapters have been removed. The game's prologue, the harbor chapters where you have to hunt down Vlad's former underling Dime, Tell the devil the dime sent you. The iconic nightmare sequences, and the entire BB subplot, including the parking garage sequence, which also means that the murder of Alex Balder remains unsolved. With only two chapters left, the second act is now a mere shadow of its former 3D self. Most chapters are a lot shorter too. For example, when Max chases after Vinnie Nitti, you won't be seeing him trying to get away from you by jumping onto a moving train and instead he's cornered only after a couple of minutes. Also, especially when compared to the PC version, enemies are absolute pushovers. Even bosses that are insane bullet sponges on PC take about as much punishment as every other enemy in the game. Since this is an isometric shooter, accurate aiming wouldn't really be possible. So the devs implemented an auto-aiming feature. Thanks to this, you are quite overpowered, and the game becomes quite easy for the most part. And it's only in the final couple of chapters when the difficulty rises drastically. 
The difficulty towards the end rises so much, in fact, that you can even find an extra life, which is the only time in the entire game. One thing that both versions have in common is that platforming is an absolute pain in the butt. Accurate jumping is just not possible in an isometric perspective. Outside of shoot dodging, the use of bullet time feels kinda pointless. Since it doesn't give you extra time for precise aiming, as Max does all the aiming by himself anyway, it basically just slows down gameplay in a way that is neither useful nor fun. Also, the input command for regular bullet time is kinda annoying, because you have to stand still and then press the R button. When you press the R button while moving, you do the shoot dodging maneuver. And to be honest, there's no reason why you shouldn't be just shoot dodging instead anyway, since that is the most effective way of attacking. Actually, just shoot dodge every time you see an enemy, period. Shoot dodging is the way to success. Another downside to the isometric perspective is that it's oftentimes hard to tell when you can hit an enemy or where you're safe from stage hazards. The in-engine cutscenes are pretty hilarious to look at. Since there is only one static camera angle, no editing, and Max can usually just be seen standing around motionlessly. Yep. There is no way you could have saved that guy, Max. It becomes most noticeable when dramatic moments like this... You know how to pick a place? Can you get through? No, it's locked. We gotta get out of here. If it's Lapino, it's... Alex? Alex! There was nothing I could do. He was dead. I could tell by the empty, accusing stare of his eyes. Turn into this. Eh, uh, I suppose the killer was just too fast? So... Overall, is this game any good? Yeah, to a certain degree. It's a very simple action game that doesn't require a lot of brains, or even good reflexes. It's a very simple kind of fun, and it's definitely interesting to see a game this violent on a Nintendo handheld. When it comes to Max Payne Media, I'd say this is my third favorite. But even though I like it, I don't think it's for everybody. I'd personally only recommend this game to people who belong to one of the following three demographics. Number one. You are a fan of Max Payne, who always wanted to see an official d make of the game, because this is pretty much what it is. Number two. You still regularly play Game Boy Advance games, and you like strange and obscure and possibly violent titles. It's a pretty decent game, so knock yourself out. Number three. You live in the year 2003, in a country where Max Payne 1 got banned for its <clears throat> glorification of violence, vigilante justice, and authentic death screams. You want to play Max Payne 2, which didn't get banned, and before you get into it, you want to legally experience the story of the first Max Payne, in one way or another. I suppose in this case, the GBA version is definitely closer to the real deal than the Marky Mark movie. Otherwise, it's definitely not the best way to experience Max Payne or to get into the series. It's an oddity. An advanced oddity. Well, and I think that's all I got to say about this game. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, feel free to give it a like. And if you want to see more videos like this, why don't you subscribe to my channel? Thanks, and I hope you have a lovely day.